We have been in the house for four weeks. It is April 432. Oh, I need some chowder. Welcome to Wild at Home, I'm Richie, and today is a very special day. Today is the day of chowder. It's April and it's snowing, and we're desperately, desperately needing some sunshine. So it's gonna be sunshine in a bowl. It's a day that you just kind of snuggle in and eat a big bowl of creamy, steamy. I was advised by my production team to not say creamy and steamy and crusty all in the same sentence so I won't. I'm not really a fan of like a minestrone or a, a vegetable soup. This is in Eastern Europe. This is the Midwest. This is where chowder is king. Um, and that's what we're gonna do today. So let's dive into it. Chowder ingredients, four celery stalks, two carrots peeled and chopped, two Yukon gold potatoes peeled and chopped, eight ounces of bacon, two tablespoons of thyme, four tablespoons of unsalted butter, about one cup of chicken broth, you can also use clam juice, four cups of half and half, one princess, I guess, whoa! And about a pound and a half to two pounds of Pacific cod. I like sick of salmon's Pacific cod. I like Pacific Cod for this. I think it's um, a really great complement to the, um, the creaminess of the, of the chowder. It's kind of sweet. It's kind of briny. We will slice and dice and then salt. Um, where we catch it, it feeds heavily on spot shrimp, which have that sweet briny flavor. So it's kind of a miroir of its, of its area which is what's really special about what Sika Salmon Shares does is that our fish is tracked back to its fishing grounds. So yeah, cubes. Simple, easy cubes. So you don't have to go crazy with it. Just salt it and then mix it up. Set it aside. I have to say the number one tip I could give anybody starting to cook is clean as you go. Clean up each step as, as much as you can. Clean up each stage as you go. That way you don't have this giant pile of dishes at the end. What happened now? You didn't fix the right band. Oh, it's been a Band-Aid saga since she woke up. She doesn't even need a Band-Aid. Do don't bring that through the kitchen. Good Lord, it's snowing out again. We're having a good day. The one thing that you can do for yourself as a new cook, it's clean as you go. It's nearly the apocalypse. You might not have half and half in your fridge right now. So what you do is you take um, regular milk, if you have regular milk, usually whole milk, and you can just add butter to it. It's sort of a, um, a hack. It's not gonna be perfect half and half, but it's pretty good. So the ratio is, um, one cup of milk to one tablespoon of unsalted butter. Melt the butter, whip it in, and you're gonna have what's pretty close to half and half. Um, so you're just adding the, some of the fat back into and back into the milk. Uh, uh, potatoes. So you have, chop your potatoes however big or small you want to. Just don't chop your fingers off. I like to do them like a little smaller than my fish chunks so I can differentiate. About eight ounces of bacon. You can always do more. No one's gonna judge you for doing more bacon. We're gonna let that bacon start to warm up. Um, you can put bacon in a hot pan or a cold pan, honestly. In, in my world, I, it doesn't matter to me. Um, one thing I also suggest, 
get yourself a cast iron enameled crock pot slash Dutch oven. They're incredible. I couldn't recommend them more. I do everything in it from bread to bacon, obviously, um, roast chickens. You can make stock in it. You can do anything. Toothbrush dance. You guys know the onion slicing trick? If you don't, wash up there. Halfway, or about three quarters, then slice down. And then slice across again. So with these carrots and the onion and the celery, we're gonna make a mirepoix. Mirepoix is, is just sauteing your vegetables until they're nice and soft in a pan. Mirepoix, vegetables, ready to go. Potatoes are ready to go. Um, butter is ready to go because it's butter and it's already done. Thyme, um, you know, I don't know. With this thyme, I would recommend getting the stock off. So you can just take this from the top and peel down. About medium, high, medium, medium, high. Um, Mirpo time. If you're looking for a nice translucent onion and the rest of the vegetables will kind of follow suit, you're going to salt and pepper as well. I like to salt right away, pull out some of the water. Now let's do my favorite part of the show, which is ask a salmon steward. Salmon steward, is chowder a meal? I think chowder is a meal. If someone owed you a meal and they bought you a bowl of chowder, would you feel satisfied that their debt had been paid? I think I would feel satisfied if they sat down to eat it with me. Chowder friendship. Did we do it? Okay. Mirpo. What I love about this Dutch oven is that when you're, when you're making a mirepoix or you're sauteing something, it has high sides so it keeps that steam in and it cooks your vegetables a little quicker. Now let's talk about chicken broth. So chicken broth is a great substitute for clam juice, which this recipe calls for. If you have a shellfish allergy, just use chicken broth. I've done it many times. I love it. It's a deep, wonderful flavor. If you can make your own chicken broth, do that. Boil some some uh, chicken bones. Now we're gonna put in our stock. We're gonna do about a cup of potatoes. Time as well to this. Feel free to add more time if you like. If you got the time, you might as well use it. Yeah. Put your bacon in there too. Now we just wait. I have to wait for this to come to a boil. How boring is that? Did you take your Band-Aid off? All right, has it been 10 minutes? God, I hope so. The other thing I recommend is fope. Have you heard of this? Of course you haven't, because I invented it. It's beautiful. This is called fope. You take an old bottle, like Clorox or whatever you might have had, a cleaning bottle. It's got a little filter in it, a little screen, and you fill it with soap and water, and then you spray the surfaces of what you need to clean. You don't have to dump um, actual liquid soap on it, which is a huge waste. It's hard on the environment. Fope, man. When you need hope, grab a bottle of fope. Patent pending on that. All right, let's add our cod right on the top here. You're not gonna stir it in, just right on the top. It's been, put the cover back on. We're gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes. I would say at this point, I would add the uh, the cream. That's what we're gonna do. See you soon, chowder. What I want to do at this point is leave the lid off, bring it up to a little like a fast simmer, and then we will drop it back down and do a low simmer for about ten minutes until it starts to thicken. So one thing you can do if your chowder isn't thickening up enough for you, you can uh, add like a cold slurry. So that would be potato starch or flour mix that whisk that into cold water until it's blended and then add that to your chowder. It takes about 30 seconds and your your base will thicken up immediately. She's too busy for chowder. Not me. 
I'm just the right amount of busy. <laughs> it's too hot to eat. Hot. Hmm. Mm, too hot. You're a okay. you're a maniac. It's so hot. It's molten chunks. lava. Tell me what the chunks are. Is this a piece of fish? That's cod. Cod. It's, it's like she hasn't listened to any of this episode. Mm. When it's not burning hot, it's really really good. The cod is meaty and a little sweet. It's perfect, actually. That's it, guys. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Wild at Home. This is cod chowder. Really easy to make, all in one pot. Cod, potatoes, carrots, onions, all the other stuff. Check out the recipe below. If you like the video, click subscribe. A big shout out to all of our members out there. Thanks for supporting what Sika Salmon Shares does. You're supporting our fishermen, our community, um, and what it means to responsibly harvest seafood. If you want to learn more, go to sickofsalmonshares.com and uh, explore our share program. I don't know what we're going to cook next time, but we'll figure it out together. Stay wild. Uh -huh.